because I was actually reading Shashi Khan's statement, you know, and you that that is two thousand two, volume five is seventy years. And my submission was that I was. So you had almost, almost concluded reading that. Yes, I. You were you were submitting that the observations therein are not correct in law. But my with regard to mandatory and direct. My 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 submission on that is that so far as it holds the three one nine one part to be directory, that apparent that in my respectful submission is not correct. Three one nine one is the material provision, and the rest of them are procedural. Uh, yes, the rest of the three are procedures as to how it will to proceed. Is my first submission regarding Shashi Khan. Uh, regarding Shashi Khan, my second submission regarding Shashi Khan is, in any case, Shashi Khan is a case where the three one nine order was passed at the correct time, and that is how the reference order has also distinguished Shashi Khan. But anyway, that's only that's that's not that's not binding or that's neither here nor there. So so therefore, according to me, Shashi Kant was a case where the order had been passed at the correct time, and therefore Shashi Kant uh, is entirely different on facts. Now Shashi Kant has been relied two times thereafter. Not both judgments are in the AS Learned Solicitors compilation. I'll refer to them at a later stage. Uh, just now. It, there is no further discussion on what Shashi Kant holds. Shashi Kant's <coughs> principle has been picked up and applied twice again. First, it has been applied in 2002, volume 5, SCC 738. If your lordship, please, your lordship can just, uh, uh, so, sorry, uh, it has been applied in 2007, volume 7, SCC 378. I'll refer to these two judgments a little later, my lord, let me first. So, my second submission on Shashi Kant is that it is entirely different on facts. There, the order was passed within time. Then, my lord, we come back to interpreting 3191 itself. Now, on that, my lord, I have just a small compilation. There is the Law Commission's report on the basis of which the provision itself was introduced. Your lord should may kindly have that report of the Law Commission. There is a page. You need a page. That is at page. Well, this is only the Law Commission's report and three, four judgments where the same principle that I'm saying has been. Just kindly have the last uh, page 53 onwards uh, of what the Law Commission says, Lord. At 54. 53 at 54. This is the 41st Law Commission report on which basis section 351, which was earlier there, was amended and renumbered in the new code as 319. Now, the reason why I'm reading it is, this also says you can join him in an ongoing trial, not after the trial is over. The whole purpose of amending this section and introducing it as per the Law Commission was to enable the person to join in an ongoing trial. And therefore, Hardeep Singh is absolutely right in its conclusions, is my respectful submission. And Malad, I would rather say the principle in Shashi Kant it does not even arise for your Lordship's consideration because Shashi Kant is a case where 3191 was passed at the correct time. Now, kindly have this bottom of page 54, my Lord. But well, yeah, 319 was amended or it, it should be unamended? Has it been amended? At... Uh, yes, 351 was altered slightly. And oh, that, is, that is a prior to the 73 Act. CRP no, under amendment. the 89 code, old code, oh, 89. 89. Yeah. So it is it was, an amendment. Actually. No, no, no. It is reintroduced in, Re in its present form oh, okay. after making the modifications which the Law Commission has suggested. Once your Lordship reads this, the Lord. What, what, what are the pre amended positions? Well, not pre amended. Uh, 65 is pre amended. Oh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. There were only persons attending trial who could be no, uh, no. joined. Can we have that? Uh, yes, I'll just get it. I'll just get mm -hmm. only a person who was actually attending. Once I read this 24.8, it will become clear. Lord. This explains the previous position and the new position. Let me read page 54 at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, 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 your Lordship may have Hardeep Singh at 113. It quotes the earlier provisions. Hardeep Singh quotes it in, uh, at page uh, 113. 
Nanak Times. Yes. If your Lordship will have the judgment in Hardeep Singh, that is. Uh, in the compilation, what is the page? Well, in, in this compilation, page, page uh, 22. It is uh, uh, at page one of the compilation given by the. Page 22. Page, internal, internal page 22. Of the yes. Compilation. Yes. Internal page 22. What para, Patwale? Para 10. Para 10. Para 10. Oh. Para 10. Yes. Para 10. Mm -hmm. In order to answer the aforesaid questions posed, it will be appropriate to refer to section 351 of the Criminal Procedure Code, where an analogous provision existed, empowered the court to summon any person other than the accused if he is found to be connected with the commission of the offence. However, when the new CRPC was being drafted, regard was had to the 41st report of the Law Commission, where in Paris 24.80, and 24.81 recommendations were made uh, made to make this provision more comprehensive the said recommendations read the 351 limited to of this is the same recommendation actually this is the same recommendation yes yes this is what i mean except from that uh, those yes 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 uh, i can read it from there but it was limited to offenders in court section 351 limited to offenders in court but then let me read it from page 53 because the complete uh, thing is there 24.80 is uh, reproduced let me read it from page 53 it's better it's completely reproduced there. yes page 54 at the bottom it's it happens sometimes though not very often that a magistrate hearing a case against certain accused finds from the evidence that some person other than the accused before him is also connected in that very offense or in a connected offense it is only proper that the magistrate should have the power to call and join him in the proceedings. Section 351 provides for such a situation, but only if that person happens to be attending the court. He can then be detained and proceeded against. There is no express provision in Section 351 for summoning such a person if he is not present in court. Such a provision would make Section 351 fairly comprehensive, and we think it proper to expressly provide for that situation. Section 351 assumes that the magistrate proceeding under it has the power of taking cognizance of the new case. It does not, however, say in what manner cognizance is taken by the magistrate. The mode of taking cognizance are mentioned in section 190 and are apparently exhausted. The question is whether against the newly added accused, cognizance will be supposed to have taken on the magistrate's own information under section 191c or only in the manner in which cognizance was first taken of the offense against the other accused. In concrete terms, if the original case was instituted on a police report that is under 191B, will cognizance against the new accused be supposed to have been taken in the same manner as under section 191C? The question is important because the methods of inquiry and trial in the two cases differ. About the true position under the existing law, there has been difference of opinion and we think it should be made clear. It seems to us that the main purpose of this particular provision is that the whole case against all known suspects should proceed with expeditiously and convenience requires that cognizance against the newly added accused should be taken in the same manner as against the other accused. We therefore propose to recast section 351, making it comprehensive and providing that there will be no difference in the mode of taking cognizance if the new person is added as an accused during proceedings. Please note, this is, of course, necessary as already provided that in such a situation, evidence must be reheard in the presence of the newly added accused. The offense for which the newly added accused can be tried is not indicated in precise terms in the section. Obviously, the offense should be connected with, with the one for which the original accused is under trial, also present tense. To bring that out, a small verbal amended, amendment is recommended. Section 351 should therefore be amended as follows. And then that 319 as it stands today is reproduced. And at page 57, ultimately, the it is accepted by the Rajya Sabha. Page 57 at the top, second column, top right. Clause 198 to 319 were added to the bill. So 319 is added by the Rajya Sabha. So we'll have three parts. I've already highlighted at the top of the page, in the fourth line, it is only proper that magistrate should have the power to call and join him in the proceedings. 
So the proceedings have to be live. Second, I have already said in the lower half of para 25.81 during the proceedings. And the third is when the proceeding is under trial. So therefore, my Lord, that is how ultimately So therefore, ultimately, my Lord, 319 as it stands, for the proceedings to be live, it is very important. And therefore, what Hardeep Singh holds is absolutely correct. And Shashi Khan doesn't take that away because Shashi Khan is a judgment where 319 was passed in time. And your Lordship was faced with a situation where because of the person added going to court and getting an injunction, etc., the proceedings could not take, uh, continue. And therefore, your Lordship found a via media that he should not be allowed to take advantage of his own wrong. Now, Lord, I have uh, given in this compilation that I have just given to your Lordships some judgments, Lord, where Hardeep Singh has been followed by your Lordships and some judgments of high courts only uh, as a persuasive uh, value, Lord, where your Lordships will see where various high courts have taken the same view before and after. And if your Lordship will have this compilation at page one is the judgment, Lord, of 2017, 7 SCC, 706. And I must say there is no added discussion. It's just Hardeep Singh has been followed. I mean, I, so far as the two judgments of your Lordships are concerned, Hardeep Singh has been followed. And the first uh, judge, uh, your Lordship may kindly have at page 8, para 10 of Brijinder Singh. Para 10 at page 8 says, it also goes without saying that section 319, which is an enabling provision, empowering the court to take appropriate steps for proceeding against any person not being accused, can be exercised at any time after the charge sheet is filed and before the pronouncement of the charge. Except during the stage of 207, 208, etc. Then para 11, my lord, is the, uh, the further what Hardeep Singh says, what is the evidence? And para 12, what is the degree of satisfaction required? Again, I am not actually going into all that because then your lordships have said that your Lord should be on the reference. Yes, your Lord should will be sending it back. Though the third question referred is, uh, I'll read that, that I submit is completely uh, covered by the, the rest of Hardeep Singh. I'll come to the third question, Lord. So this is one judgment where Hardeep Singh is followed. Then, my Lord, another judgment where Hardeep Singh is followed is at page 35 in 2021 itself. Yes. At page 35, if your Lordship will see, that is not reported in SCC. So I have the SCC online citation for your Lordships at page 35. Now again, the uh, page 40, para 33, when the discussion starts, Hardeep Singh is considered. Para 33, while considering the rival submissions, the law on the, the law on the scope and ambit of 319 is required to be considered. In the recent decision in the case of Sartaj Singh, this very bench has considered in detail the law on the scope and ambit of 319. In the said decision, this court considered the decisions of Hardeep Singh, Mohammad Ispahi, uh, Rajesh, etc. Then, my lord, that decision is quoted extensively here. And after quoting it extensively, right up to page 48, then para 34, the ratio is laid down by the court. At page 48, para 34. It again follows Hadi. And perhaps it would have to because it's a two-judge bench and Hadeep is five. So it would. Uh, the ratio of these decisions, para 34, on the scope and ambit of the powers of the court can be summarized as under. At page 49, clause 9. Again, Lord, after charge sheet is filed and before the pronouncement of judgment, except though it's the same, it's the same. Now, Lord, some judgments of 
different courts will not where similar view is taken high courts if your lordship wants i can just quickly take your lordship through or i have attached five or six of them lot where there are all single benches of the high courts you know where three or four of them are before hardeep singh also take the same view on a plain interpretation of 319 and the others are after hardeep singh and if they are after then naturally you know they will have no option but to follow hardeep so you know my therefore respectful submission is that so far as 319 is concerned the provision of the section itself is crystal clear you know i have labored yesterday enough on it i did not again labor on that you know and it is conditional at at the cost of you know extreme rep uh, re repetition you know i just 3191 where in the course of any inquiry into or trial of an offence it appears from the evidence that any person not being an accused has committed offence for which such person could be tried together with the accused so that's the crucial part you know, together with the accused and therefore the court has the power also you know this section appears in a in that part of the code which is chapter 24 which deals with general provisions as to inquiries and trials that's the placing of the section it is placed in the part of the code which regulates how inquiry and trial is to proceed so if the trial itself is over then there is no question of exercising power under 3192 and that i have said when it is fixed for pronouncement of judgment and after judgment the court becomes functus officio so that is that is one part now my lord i need to clarify one more functus thing lord and that is lord the order by which the trial was separated kindly have that order my lord dated 28 september 2017 it is at page 537 of volume 2 of the additional document mm -hmm. Judgment. What you read also is that after trial and before pronouncement also it can be done. Three sixty two was the after judgment, no review, no change except clerical errors. But now, I mean, just to put the mat in our case, it may not arise because thirty one ten was the date when it was uh, posted for judgment. Judgment was pronounced. Let us say in a case, trial is complete, arguments are heard. The matter is posted for judgment because the provision three one nine. What you say is also is the power of the court to find out whether somebody has been left out deliberately to include that section. While assessing the evidence, the judge finds that somebody else should have been. At that stage, he does not pronounce the judgment. He says for further hearing. Correct. So that, trial revives. I will. It revives. So at that stage it can be done. Correct. Just to put the matter. So I was I was also because uh, there was a hiatus between posting the matter for judgment mm. and pronouncement of judgment. Correct. So we were also discussing yesterday, and I would have said it uh, a little later that what happens if when the judge is sieving through the judgment yes. and he finds that actually this man is correct is uh, uh, it it can it should be the main person who should be there. Then, my lord, according to me, he would post it for hearing. Yes. Okay. and then he would pass an order under 319 and thereafter proceed accordingly is that that kind of a situation has occurred in a judgment lord which is a, actually a one pager it is well yeah but well yeah just one second one second see the language employed in 353 is 353 yes the judgment in every trial in any criminal court of original jurisdiction shall be pronounced in the open court by the presiding officer immediately after termination of the trial Or at some subsequent. But that's all right. Supposing yeah. immediately he pronounces, then then we are in my situation. Then according to me, he cannot do. It. No, no. He has an option to immediately pronounce. No, no. Correct. What I mean is, my brother asked a question. 
no does it make any difference at all because if he immediately pronounces or pronounces on a future date <laughs> so once the hearing is complete and once it is posted for judgment the only thing he can do is he has to pass a judgment this way or that way on the same day or on a future date after reserving the matter just to throw some light on this so on that or not what my submission is hmm. if he passes the judgment the crucial point is when he passes the judgment because trial is over when he fixes it for judgment then we are in a situation where trial is over but there is no judgment so the court really is not functus of issue the court is, is still in session of the sessions case this case will show it's very interesting but first let me complete this then i'll tell you lot how this case will show this problem so he is still in session of the trial so at that point of time he has two options if he has not pronounced judgment on the same day when he has closed the trial he can then repost the trial for hearing and if he repost the trial for hearing he can pass an order under 319 or he can pass a judgment but according in my respectful submission the moment he passes a judgment he in any case becomes functus officio then he cannot pass 319 why it has happened in this case and that's why i am showing these orders what the learned judge does in this case on 28 september 2017 he passes an order separating the 319 application and saying i will continue with the trial this i am separating now when he separates it in what trial is that application so he numbers it as a miscellaneous application in no trial mm. so he says it will be numbered as a miscellaneous application he has no power to entertain such a miscellaneous application i am going to read those orders just now when the trial is over he passes the judgment in trial number so and so of 2015 but on that then when he sits to decide the application that trial is already over so the order in the application is passed in a miscellaneous application number so and so mm -hmm. it is the procedure and the existence of the application is unknown to law and this case is a very good example of that situation now therefore that's what i'm trying going to show to your lordships just now now kindly have this order at page 537 where he separates the application from from the, from the trial and then what happens as a consequence of that it's in which volume it's in volume 3 lord a uh, 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 volume 2 of those additional documents it's a thickish volume yes What page? What volume? Five thirty-seven. Five thirty-seven. Yes, we have. Now, kindly see at the top. It is N D Malod uh, is the narcotic drugs. The trial number is two eighty-nine of two thousand fifteen. Mm. Now this order he passes. The case is at the stage of filing reply to the application under section three one nine CRPC. Today reply is filed. Perusal of the file shows the case pertains to the year two thousand fifteen. Ten accused are facing trial in this case. Out of ten, two are on bail. Remaining eight are in custody. The prosecution has examined all required witnesses. Further, the High Court has time bound this case with a direction to complete the trial till eighth November two thousand seventeen. and today is 28 september 2017 so because of application under section 319 trial will take further time present accused will suffer without any fault of them so elmer is directed to separate the application under 319 and register this application as a criminal miscellaneous it cannot be done for separating present trial and application under 319 so he separates the trial from the the application from the trial what is that is what is this so almat is some post there yeah, almat almat is the uh, is the your court reader below is below the reader the almat is there is a reader and then there is an almat the custodian of the record i uh, yes so to say yes. i thought there is somebody called ahmad <laughs> so in that <laughs> <laughs> the restorer blood who keeps the files so restorer who keeps the files blood 
I rely upon 1999 one RCR criminal 283, where our own High Court held one of the accused went abroad, not available, trial lingering on. High Court directed to take action for splitting the case. Further, as already discussed above, this case pertains to 2015. Ten accused are facing trial. Two are on bail, remaining are in custody. Let APP request for adjournment for prosecution evidence. My mind, prosecution has sufficient opportunity. So I need not read the rest of it. But the next steno of this court is directed to print two copies of this order. One is to be placed on this file, and this file is fixed for recording statement of accused under 313. Other copy is to be placed on criminal miscellaneous file, and criminal miscellaneous file is fixed for consideration of application under 319, which is fixed for 4th October, etc. So he separates it, which according to me, he cannot do. It's completely illegal, this order. Then what he does, he decides the main case. Now, kindly see the judgment in the main case. I just want to show the index and then one para of the judgment. Because yesterday I said, this application is not mentioned. I stand corrected. It is meant. So that is, judgment is in volume 3, R3. This very. Much. Can we have this volume? Just have the very first page of the judgment. 
the judgment is rendered in session case number 289 of 2015. The application under 319 was filed in this session's case. Now, just kindly take uh, page uh, 9 of this judgment. I just want to show your lordships. Uh, it records that uh, the para in the lower half of the page, after completing necessary formalities, Chalan was presented against 10 accused by mentioning that investigation is pending against the remaining person. And after completion of investigation, Chalan against them will also be presented. So there was only one more accused original. So there is his Chalan is much later. It comes in 2019. So therefore, there is no trial or inquiry pending against him. Then kindly at page 84, where this, where this application is mentioned, page 84, what he says in this judgment at page 84. Para and uh, bottom of the page. Learned APP further argued that during investigation it is transpired that kingpin behind the whole sequence was Supal Singh Khaira, who through his personal security officers Joga Singh and Manish and Charanjit Kaur were behind the curtain, argued that summoning these accused an application under 319 has been filed, which is pending for today. Then he records in brackets, application for summoning accused is also filed, which is separately registered as criminal miscellaneous because High Court has directed to dispose of this case and uh, this, which application this court is going to decide today itself by its separate order. Now, this is this is absolutely incorrect. He, can, he has no inherent power of uh, like a 482 or a 151 CPC. He is bound by the... Uh, the so, yeah, so this makes it clear that he has decided it after the... Correct, the, correct. The, 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 the correct. Is pronounced. correct, correct. That the second order also says that today I have already pronounced my judgment. That order will also say that. So therefore, now kindly have that order by which the application is decided. Because that application is not being decided in this session trial at all. It is a separately numbered criminal miscellaneous. How is it even maintainable is the question, is, is the first submission, Lord. Just kindly see that order, Lord. That is at page 121 in the main paper book itself. Page? page 121 of the SLP paper, the first paper. One twenty one. Kindly see the top. Criminal miscellaneous number. 339 of 2017, filing ID CNR, the trial number is missing. It was session case 289 of 15. So he's not deciding it in that session case at all. Because he, according to him, he's made it a separate standalone application today. This, this is completely, this order is completely against law on this ground alone. Then he records this order of mine will dispose of an application, etc. On facts, I'm not going into it. Then he says at page 128. Hundred and thirty, sorry. One three zero. One three zero. As things stand out, this FIR was registered and Chalan against 10 accused was presented by mentioning that after investigation, the Chalan against the remaining accused will also be filed. Till date, no Chalan is presented against the accused whose names are mentioned. By my separate judgment, all accused against whom Chalan was presented, except one, are convicted today. Then proceeding was separated because High Court said decide quickly, etc. So, therefore, he also records that I have already decided that. So, Malad, So therefore, Malad, the submission is that this order is completely against law. It is completely illegal because the, uh, he himself separates it from the trial. 
Now, where is his power to separate? That is 317. Finally, at 317. When can he separate? 3172. And which trial he can separate? It is only against an accused who against whom an inquiry or trial is pending. 317, the title is Provision for Inquiry and Trial being held. I'm sorry. Not this. 317. Yes. All right. 317 says Provision for Inquiry and Trial being held in the absence of the accused in certain cases. One is not relevant, but to, for the sake of completedness, I will read it. At any stage of an inquiry or trial under this code, if the judge or magistrate is satisfied for reasons to be recorded, that the personal attendance of the accused before the court is not necessary in the interest of justice, mm -hmm. or that the accused persistently disturbs the proceedings in court, mm -hmm. the judge or magistrate may, if the accused is represented by a pleader, dispense with his attendance and proceed with such inquiry or trial in his absence and may at any subsequent stage of the proceeding direct the personal presence of such accused. Now, next is relevant. If the accused in any case <laughs> is not represented by a pleader or if the judge or magistrate considers his personal attendance necessary, he may, if he thinks fit and for reasons to be recorded by him, either adjourn such inquiry or trial or order that the case of such accused be taken up or tried separate. So under two says, if he thinks for reasons to be recorded, he has two options. Either he can adjourn the entire inquiry or trial, or he can, uh, in the case of such accused order, that the trial be separated and taken up separate. But it is only against an accused who is facing an inquiry or trial. It is not an application under 319, because 319 says in the course of any inquiry or trial. Now, if you are application file, you are segregating it and registering it as a criminal miscellaneous it's violence to 319 in my respect, apart from anything else. So therefore, my Lord, this is the second submission which I am making, why this order should be set aside. Then, my Lord, I must also show your Lordships one other order, which according to me has no legal significance at all. But that is an order dated 31st October. He passes judgment of conviction, etc. He passes this order. Then he passes one more Zimni order. But not kindly see that also. Or the third order which he passes on 31st of October. <coughs> that is again the second volume, R2. At page 547. Page 547, that thick volume. Yeah. <laughs> 547, kindly have arguments heard. Now, again, if your lordship will see, <laughs> this all, I'll read the first right from the one. In fact, in the in, in Syriatum, this would be uh, the first one. Then second is the judgment and third is on that application under 319. Uh, he says no DW is present, neither opted to be examined. Arguments heard. By the my separate detailed judgment of even date. No, this is the second one. Judgment is pronounced. Uh, arguments heard. By the my separate detailed judgment of even date, accused, the names are given, are convicted under NDPS Act, whereas accused Kala Singh acquitted. As accused Anil, alias Nilu has been declared as proclaimed offender. So file be completed and consigned to the record room. Be put up as and when Anil Kumar Nilu surrenders before the court or proceeds by the police. Contraband material involved stands confiscated. Same be disposed of as per rules. Now he consigns the file to the record and says, whenever Anil Kumar's case comes, please put this up again. So according to me, this is not an order under 3172. Cannot be because Anil Kumar is not even facing. You know, what are the arguments heard? Yes. So this is prior to a sentence or a what? 
Same day. Thirty one. No, bro. It's everything is happening here. This same day. Same day. Everything is just a patwali. Actually, the judgment runs to hundred twenty pages. Correct. 